So now we're going to jump into Adobe Camera Raw and look at the color grading uh, that is in the new Adobe Camera Raw and the clever and creative uses that we can have for it. Now, for all intents and purposes, I don't really think that that's the best place to have a color grading tool. And if you know my workflow, I say that effects should wait for the end of the workflow. With that being said, the color grading, I feel, should wait until after you're done with your whole image, which means that you've already processed it in Adobe Camera Raw, and then you've brought it into Photoshop. But right now, and color grading can be used in a more interesting way in Adobe Camera Raw, and it's going to deal with tones and not colors at all. And you're like, what? Crazy. Okay, so here we've got this strong, burly man here uh, holding a pretty awesome sword, if I do say so myself. So <laughs> what we're going to do here is I'm just going to show you color grading here, just a, a basic concept behind color grading. Uh, I've already shown this video on my YouTube videos before, so I'm going to go kind of fast here. I tend to like going in here this way, and instead of going into the three bars, I don't really like that, the three circles, uh, and adjusting my hues this way. So I'm going to bring the saturation up a little bit. We're going to bring this into the blues to make our shadows a little bit more on the blue side. And then we can use the luminance here to brighten up the, the background there while we make it more blue. So we'll go into our midtones and we'll go ahead and move this around like this. Uh, and then maybe, you know, maybe reduce that saturation a little bit there and then brighten up some of those midtones. And maybe we'll make them more on the orangish yellow side, probably more towards the yellow, something like that. Um, that's looking pretty good there. Um, then we go to our highlights and let's see what happens with our highlights when we go ahead and add maybe some let's say some orange to those highlights. And I'm just kind of playing around here to show you uh, how the color grading works. Essentially what we've done here is we've taken our, um, our black and we've made it um, blue. We've taken our midtones, made them a little orange highlights and make them orange a little bit as well. Now, looking at this for the sake of color grading, this is traditionally how you would use these color grading uh, tools in Adobe Camera Raw, right? But I want to show you a way that you can do use these tools to modify tones and tones alone. If you'll notice, what I did here is I started modifying the luminance of these as I was adjusting the colors, right? But what happens if we don't give it any color and we just give it luminance? Ah, here's where things are going to get interesting. I'm going to press alter option. I'm going to reset this color grading. Let's go over to this image here, a dork image. I love these nerdy images when we get into the specs of how things work. So typically the person that's going to come in here is going to grab one of these uh, circles and just start moving around and trying to color grade things, right? Well, check this out. Go just, this, just go into the shadows. Watch what happens if we skip all of the hue, all of the saturation, just go to luminance. In the shadowy areas, we can make them brighter by increasing the brightness of the darkest areas in our image or our shadows, or we can make them darker. Okay, check this out. So I'm gonna increase this up just a little bit, just like this to about, let's say 50%. Let's go into our midtones. We can actually tell our midtones to become more like the white areas in the image or push them to the darker areas in the image to adjust the contrast in our photograph. So if I move these towards this way, our midtones are getting darker and we're starting to shape out and sculpt those midtones to be more on the darker level of things. Now, if we go over to our highlights, we can tell our highlights to be brighter or we can tell our highlights to, to come down a little bit. Now, this might not seem that earth shattering. You're like, Blake, I knew that. Of course I knew that. But let's say you're working on a raw image, right? And you come over here to your basic adjustments and you start modifying your shadows to bring those down and then your highlights to bring these up or bring them down or your highlights actually you probably bring down and your shadows you would bring up. Look at the range that you can get now out of the midtones in your images. Now, clearly you wouldn't want to go to this range, but we basically just took our midtones and we spread them all the way out into our highlight and our shadow areas, which can actually open up our image. A lot of times I tell you to flatten out the image first before modifying it and making it great, right? Well, here is a way that you can really flatten that image out because if we were to turn off the color grading here, look at that. Even with these tones up here, if we go to the basic adjustments here, look at what happens, especially in this area right here when we turn the color grading aspect off. You'll start to see that in the darkest dark areas of those shadows, there's a really weird transition in this one right here. Look at that one. There's a really weird transition where it kind of is halfway in the dark areas and halfway in the mid-tone areas. And that's just because of the way we slam down those highlights and bring up those shadows. But when we go into this color grading aspect, we can actually force our mid-tones to become more like the shadows and more like the highlights and open up the dynamic range in the photograph, essentially giving us access to not one, but two different ways to, to alter our highlights and our shadows. It's basically giving us two highlights and shadows adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw right now, which is really, really freaking incredible if you follow the way that I edit my images and you follow my workflow. 
you can really open up that image so you can close it down later in Photoshop. So while I don't think that color grading is a great thing to do at the beginning of your workflow, especially if you do plan on coming into Photoshop, watch what happens when we use this in conjunction with these highlights and shadows adjustments at the raw level. So we're going to go into color grading. I'm going to go to the shadows here and I'm going to bring these up. I can brighten up those shadows so that they aren't so dark or make the shadows a little bit darker, but I want to expand the dynamic range. So let's bring up those shadows. Let's go into our midtones. Do I want them to be more like our dark, dark areas or more like our highlights? I think in this case, it actually works out better if they're more towards our darks. Let's go to our highlights. Do I want them to be brighter or do I want to take some of that highlight away? I think it's better. Look at the, how the highlights on his face are starting to look better now because what we've done is we've condensed the dynamic range that we have in our original file. Now, this isn't even a raw file. This is just an Adobe stock image that I turned into a TIFF to be able to use this way. Imagine the capability at the raw level. So we're going to go into the basic adjustments here. Now watch this. So if I go to the highlights, look at how I bring that down. I really start to flatten this image out in a, in a great way that I can expand on that dynamic range later in any way, shape or form that I want. It's very similar to the approach that you would have with something like the HDR process back in circa 2012, but because of the tools that we have now, it's actually much better. So from here, what you could then do is start adjusting maybe the contrast, maybe even the exposure a little bit here, but then keeping those whites down so that it doesn't blow out the sword in the face and then maybe increasing or decreasing those dark, dark areas, slightly increasing that exposure, while also maintaining and making sure that the whites don't blow out. So it gives us an extended control that we would have over our light and dark areas that we wouldn't have before. Watch what happens when I turn the eyeball off, click and hold this. See that? I wouldn't actually never be able to get this heightened amount of dynamic range out of the image. That's for heightening dynamic range, but let's do this. Let's go ahead and reset all of this stuff. So we're going to reset to the open position that we were here go into the basic settings here. And let's say I want to bring down those highlights a little bit, bring up those shadows and work on this in reverse. Maybe I want those, uh, that dark area to be a little less here and then come into the exposure and brighten that up a little bit. But then I'll come down to the color grading area and then I'll work on my midtones, highlights and shadows with the luminance factor involved. Okay. So we'll darken those dark areas down. We can then come in here and we can bring those midtones more towards the darks so or brighten those midtones up and then go into the highlights and consider what we would do there as well. So it basically just gives you an extended reach for your tonal quality. So for me, I don't tend to do much of my color grading at the raw level. So why this is so great for me is that it just opens up more sliders for the luminance values of my highlights, midtones, and shadows while not having to worry about color or color at all, because the only time I would ever use this color grading adjustment here in Adobe Camera Raw is if I intended to color grade the image at the raw level and leave it finished at the raw level. But you know, from watching my workflow, I spend a lot of time in Photoshop. So the more dynamic range I can get out of my raw file at the raw level, the better off I am. So at this point, I could open this up in Photoshop, continue my process, and then color grade the image in Photoshop and not have to use these color grading tools here and have open dynamic range while I do my tone, color, and effects processing. Boom. This blew my mind when I first started thinking about this color grading section in terms of tones and not colors. Now, I did say that I, I color grade my images towards the end of my workflow, correct? Now, I also have many panels and many things that I've shown you over the years to color grade your images using artistic color effects, correct? Okay, so we can all say that that's done, right? Now, the color grading that's in Adobe Camera Raw might not be that intuitive to people who really know and understand color, but it's more intuitive for individuals who are just starting in color so they can see what's happening to their highlights, midtones, and shadows. So what I would say here with this tip is that this is a great opportunity at the end of your workflow, like you see here, I've got my, my image, I've got all the things that I've done here leading up to the end of this image, and I get to the end and I say to myself, you know what? I want to do some creative color grading with this. I can actually use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter to do that. And you're going to say, Blake, why would you make a stamp above everything uh, and then do that because it's going to mess up all the colors down below and then you're not going to be able to access those things? Not necessarily. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Control, Shift, Alt, and E or Command, Shift, Option, E on a Mac to make a stamped layer. I'm going to call this Color Grade. Okay. Now I'm going to go into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So I'm going to go to Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Could have used Shift Control A as that option. And now I'm going to go into color grading. So here I'm at the end of my workflow. 
I'm done with everything. I want a different opinion or a different look for the image that I can get in my image using the color grading tools that I have here. Now, these color grading tools versus the color grading tools in Photoshop are very different. You can't use blend modes here in Adobe Camera Roll. You can't use opacity here, but you can if you do it with this cool, clever trick. Okay, so check this out. I'm just gonna make a, a very quick modification here to the, the various things here. So let's go into my shadows. I'm just gonna use the sliders here. Uh, with the shadows, I'm gonna make them a little bit more on the blue side. I really like making my shadows on the blue side. It's kind of, I guess, a trademark in, in a way uh, that I like my blues to look. So I'm gonna make my shadows a little bit on the blue side. Uh, the luminance isn't really going to matter here uh, unless you want it to. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'll show you how it really doesn't necessarily matter, but we'll just make that zero. And then I'm gonna go to midtones. And in my midtones, um, you know, usually when I uh, dual process or, or cross process, it's blues in the shadows, yellows in the uh, highlights. So let's with the um, with these colors here in the midtones, let's go with something like the orangish colors here, okay? Um, and then with that, I'm gonna drop the saturation just a slight bit, and then. I'm not going to worry about the luminance because it's not even going to matter when I do what I do in Photoshop. Then I'm going to go into the highlights. And as I'm color grading this out, like this is just the way that I color grade. I mean, everyone's going to have their own particular style and they might even have certain things that they have in their own workflow too. So you can even make an action for this if you wanted to as well. But I'm going to go with the yellows and the highlights. I like how it warms up that foreground area with those yellows and those highlights there. And so from here, I can just turn this on and off to see what my color grade was. I definitely have something that's uh, a little bit more interesting than the original image that I had before. For. It gives it a different mood and a different feel because I've applied color to certain tonal values that I really like. So now I'll press OK. So this is going to be on a stamped layer at the top. What that means is that if I were to do something below here, like take a solid color fill and just fill this with something like blue, you know, you're not going to see that. And the reason why you're not going to see that is because we stamped all of the pixels from below to the top. So we basically just said when we did this, when we made that stamp, that we're restarting from the top layer. Well, that's not always the way you want to work in what we call a non-destructive workflow. And if I want this color grade that I use here to still be interactive with the things below, I can't leave it this way. And actually, you wouldn't want to leave it this way because after you finish this off, if you said, oh, well, you know what, I kind of want to take away that um, that vignette that I had or that square vignette that I had at the bottom, I want to take that away. It's not going to go away because we have the stamp layer at the top. But if we turn off the stamp, we can now see that solid color fill underneath, right? But check this out. So in this color grade here, I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal to color. Now, because it's doing that, what it's doing is it's saying, it's only going to take the colors of these pixels and apply it to everything below. So when we use the color grading tool in Camera Raw as a filter on our image, what we then need to do is turn it to the color blend mode so that it only applies what it did to the colors that way all the pixels underneath can shift and change and modify and be altered. And how do we know that? Well, if I make that solid color fill underneath there again, look at that. <laughs> You're gonna see that this layer is now interacting with that color fill underneath, which means it's now interacting with everything underneath. So we took a destructive thing like making a stamp and color grading it and turning it into a color blend mode so that everything underneath can still shine through. How do we know that? Well, if I click on this curves adjustment layer here and I modify the properties of this curves adjustment layer and just do something outlandish like that, everything underneath is still interacting with the color grading above. What that would mean is that if I added a curves adjustment layer underneath here, okay, and I were to increase the darks or increase the lights here, it's gonna change the way the top most layer interacts with what's underneath. And that's really powerful and really impactful when you're working through your workflow, you get to the end, you think you're done, and then you get to the end, you're like, wait a second, there was something in here I need to turn off. Well, you can't really do that if you have this as a stamped layer set to normal because everything else underneath won't interact with what's on top. Changes to the color blend mode. And guess what? You now have the ability to color grade using Adobe Camera Raw's color grading features in Photoshop if it makes you a little bit more comfortable with doing your color grading there. What's if you're privy with actions, you can even get really clever on making your own actions for kind of preset different color grades that you would do in your images.